Women have been angry for a long time. A long time. So is it really so surprising that after all the abuse they've taken, they are finally fighting back with deadly force? I don't think anybody could have anticipated sort of what's unfolded in the last year or so. Screw the patriarchy! It's oddly prescient, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, this book was written in 2015. It's not like this is an exact like response to what's just happened, but I think it's more of a response to the slow burn that's been happening for a long time. We can't make you CEO. Because I'm a woman? I didn't say that. Obviously, we've had a real cultural moment with women telling their stories and how it really feels to be a woman in the workplace, the way we take in ideas about our beauty and how important that is, and also sexual violence toward women and how we combat that. This show challenges the audience to look at all those things in a really interesting way. Over the season, this story really challenges the status quo. All those years of being demeaned and harassed just because we wanted to sit at the table with the big boys? Tell me, you've never wished you could pull the trigger. From the moment I put on the red wig and her clothes and her shoes and sit in her office, it's so much fun to play Kitty. Kiss it. Excuse me? My foot. Kiss it. I don't relate to much about Kitty, except maybe her skincare regime. <laughs> I've learned a lot from Kitty in terms of taking care of myself, but I can't really relate to any way she operates. I think that Kitty, she's beyond where I wanted her to be. She is capable of much bigger, stronger, like almost global moves. Over the arc of the season, by the end, she's like, I can do anything. She's on top of the world. So I think that we set up for season two that very potentially the new head of Jennifer could be Kitty Montgomery. When we first meet Plum, she is really conflicted about who she wants to be when she's been living with the messages that almost all of us do, that happiness is contingent on some kind of physical state that we can achieve, and if we can get there, then we will be more lovable. And she really believes that her life is gonna begin when she's thin, but it begins before then. <laughs> to Plum! Jennifer lives! <laughs> What she's learned is that happiness doesn't come in a body type. I think she realizes that she has the power to do something. She has the power to fix something. Look who's awake. In the first season, she goes from being a person who really profoundly doesn't accept herself to being someone who really radically accepts herself. I'm fat as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. This is a, a, a character who's got a full range of everything. Like, I'm not purely perfect. I'm not the butt of every joke. I like that she's a constant surprise. And she does things that I wouldn't do or couldn't do. Plum took bolder steps than I thought she was going to in the first season. I always say the best uh, setup for a story is someone really committed to a very bad plan. <laughs> so that's where she is. I think Dietland is completely unexpected. It's actually the antithesis of what the title suggests. Working on the show, I mean, it's led me to think a lot about how hard I am on myself and my body, how much pressure I feel, especially in this industry, to look a certain way, and how that often leads me to beating up on myself. And I found the experience of working on this show really freeing in that way. I think it's helped me maybe have a better relationship with myself a little bit. I haven't spent my life dieting. I came to fat acceptance pretty early, but I have experienced the hatred and fat phobia that Plum has. And I have spent a lot of my life waiting for things to begin. It wasn't until I started taking control of myself that things changed. Sometimes it's gonna hit points that are so close to home and so true, and it's going to give a lot of people a lot of encouragement to keep on their journey. Over the first season, part of what we address in the show is that these issues affect everybody. They affect men and women, and I hope people want to talk more about their experiences. So if anything, I felt like the show just became more urgent because it'll keep that conversation going. It won't be something that happened and then we tuck it away like taken care of. You know, an entire world history of oppression isn't going to disappear overnight. So I just hope that it really continues this conversation. I think it would take a revolution.